All right, next in our workflow is going to be a little cloning and healing. Uh, we got the clone and heal tools, and they both have their strengths and their weaknesses, but fortunately the strength of one is the weakness of the other, and vice versa. So between the two of them, you can achieve just about anything for covering up bad pixels. So to do this, I'm going to make a new blank layer. Just click here, and I'll name it Clone Heal, and lock its position. I'm going to start off with the healing tool. You click here and it's the second one down. And I'm just going, oh, before it'll do anything, you have to set up at the top where it says sample, current, and below. So if there were any pixels above this layer, or any layers above, it would ignore them. Uh, my color adjustment layers are above there too. Well, they haven't been put there yet, but they would be. But you can go ahead and just click this where it says for it to ignore the color adjustments. It's a little redundant. They'd be up anyway. But for this and, by the way, the, the clone tool, which we'll do later, you want, to, you want this to be set to current and below and, and leave that like that. Okay, so the healing tool is essentially a texture cloning tool, but it, it adjusts the colors for their new surroundings. So even if the colors don't match, the texture will match. And I've got, I'm not just going to clone this little stray hair out here. And the problem with it, well, you can see the direction of these hairs are, are in different areas. So I'm going to take frequent donor areas from where I am. So you just hold the Alt click, Alt key down, and go above. By the way, on the brush setting here, if you if you kick it back from 100, which is Photoshop's defaults, put it to about 90, and it'll just soften that edge enough so you don't notice it. Because sometimes you will notice that little hard edge right, right there. And because this is on a, a separate layer, I'm going to be able to uh, preview what I've done or hide it, whatever, and you can go with a pretty small brush this way. So I'm only cloning what absolutely, or healing what absolutely needs it. And see, so I'll scrub a little above, and you can go a little bit from behind. It really doesn't matter. It's just I'm taking frequent donor areas so that it matches the colors. This also works real well if you're doing uh, skin tones and somebody with a bad complexion, like a like a portrait, and they've got zits or whatever. You can just find a suitable area of texture, get your get your uh, donor area, and if to see where up here it says aligned, if it's left off, the donor area moves along as you can see. See the little plus sign above it? But then if I come over here to a new area, see the donor area gets back from its original spot. So all you need to do is get yourself a good area of texture and then you can actually just sort of crisscross your brush pen like this over any blemishes in your portrait and it'll get rid of them. Here's a little bit more here. When you get into the small areas, sometimes the healing brush doesn't work too well because it, it's trying to, it'll, you'll get a little bleeding. If this becomes a problem, grab your lasso tool and lasso just what you need like this. And this way when you continue with the healing, it won't, you won't get that bleed. See, that's in its neighboring area, but now it won't bleed. And control D, deselect. So there's the strength of the healing tool. Now let's, in fact, let's take a look at it real quick. You can just hide these other layers and you can see exactly what we've done. It's a lot better than just healing to a duplicate of your original layer because then it's easy to preview what you've done and easy to erase any mistakes you might have made. Okay, next we're going to do a little bit of cloning and healing. Now the strength of the cloning, in, uh, the clo excuse me, the strength of the cloning, as opposed to healing here, is that you've got an opacity slider so that you can airbrush it in in degrees, and also you've got these blending modes up here. They're similar to the blending modes here, however, on your layers, however you use them differently. The value here is that you'll either be using normal, darken, or lighten, and we're going to use darken. The value here is that if I accidentally clone a pixel lighter than anything, or 
anything here, it'll ignore it. It'll only darken these areas. Uh, the opposite would be, say you're trying to airbrush the bags under somebody's eyes. You would only want to lighten. So you don't want to clone any darker pixels. So select lighten. So either between the three of them, experiment around, you'll find what works here. If you want, it's pretty self-explanatory. You want to make it darker, choose darken. And I'm going to go with a real low flow rate and just build this up in degrees, cloning from above and below so I get the warmer colors and then the cooler reflections from the sky. They're going to average in in this area. Now, you can leave the opacity set to 100 and the flow rate set real low. And what will happen is if you scrub long enough, the opacity will indeed reach 100%. But of course, I'm not since I've got it at such a low opacity, I won't... I'm not going to be doing it for that long. See, I'm just alt-clicking to get my donor area above and just scrubbing a little bit. Now what happens is the more you do this, the more it averages things out and you wind up with an area of no texture at all. Now right here it's no big deal because it's a little out of focus here anyway, so there is no texture. See how it's not lightening it? It's only, it's only darker. If I wanted to get it back, choose normal, and then if I need to bring that back up in lightness, I can. Okay, but you can see here it gets a little bit, it's like airbrush, so it gets a little diffused. Uh, a little trick I like to use is you go back to your healing after having done this, and then we can actually heal some texture back in so I'm gonna, there's a little texture back here. You want to be careful that you don't heal any repetitive patterns. Like if you start to notice the same little bump over and over, it'll, it'll show. But see how easy this is? We can just clone and heal to our heart's content. And I'd say that's pretty good. And there's our net result. In fact, you can see some of the texture as it's built back up. And it's all on its own layer, so you can preview the before and the after. As far as when you're trying to do this of what to go for, my advice to you is tackle the easy areas first and work your way in. Just go from gen from easy to hard, because the, you'll find that by the time you, pref you have dramatic results, as you can see right here, and I just kind of tackled it a little bit at a time. Now, cloning and healing is could be considered an art in itself. It's where your artistic eye kind of has to come into play. Uh, it is a lot easier if you're using a tablet, I'll tell you that. Okay, we've done all the, the actual hard work, the manual labor as I like to call it now, in these, in these two layers above our original. You can see the original in there. And from here on in we're going to be doing uh, techniques of color adjusting to make up for all you know, the fact that this is pretty washed out coming from Camera Raw. It was washed out on purpose to preserve all the values of the histogram, and now we're going to bring it back and really make this thing come alive. But hopefully this little demo was enough to show you the relative strengths and weaknesses of the two tools. The healing tool heals your uh, samples, the texture more. Uh, the clone tool, just the color itself, but it's got that flow rate, and that's its strength.